so here's a number of projects that I have underway. Um, this is a hatchet from my brother-in-law, and uh, we uh, we cleaned up the head, and uh, I'm gonna I have gun bluing on it just to see what that would what would that would do to it, and uh, it's kind of cool. But I think we're gonna sand off the gun bluing and and uh, make the handle dark instead. By uh, we're gonna burn it, I think. It's like Japanese wood burning or whatever it's called. I forget what it's called. Anyway, uh, this knife, I still have to finish this knife. I'm going to shorten the blade on it a bit. And uh, But this is this was made out of a uh, file, actually. It's supposed to be like a little carving knife, I guess. And uh, this, this guy, I kind of like this guy, how it's how he's coming along. Although I'm kind of going to, I'm going to abandon him probably because I'm not sure about the steel. It's, uh, it's actually made out of one of these. I cut it up and... Then used a grinder to forge, well, cut that guy anyways. So, um, and Pelicans. I'm going to be refurbishing and rebuilding some Pelicans. And uh, believe it or not, uh, going back to this handle, it actually came from, from this. So, where's the other half of it? Right here. I basically just carved it down to look like a, look like a decent handle. But that's... That's what it used to be like before I cut it in half. So it's it's coming along anyway. And uh, this is going to be one of my fun projects. I'm going to clean up this axe head. I'm going to clean it up real good. And then stick, uh, stick this big guy in it. Should have a decent axe then. So for my first video, what I really wanted to show you guys was uh, this uh, Dodge Ram leaf spring down here. As you can see, this is some pretty thick steel here, and I wanna, I'm going to take this piece off today. And uh, the idea is to then take that over to my buddy's place and throw it in a fire. And uh, we're also going to have marshmallows, hot dogs, or sausages. It's going to be great. Um, the idea is I'm going to I think I'm going to cut it in half about there, and uh, then heat it up in the fire and use a hammer to bend down well just bend them straight anyways and uh and it's they're so thick that i think they'll make great spearheads and uh the way i see it if you're surviving in the forest and you've run out of ammo um probably a giant a big spear would be one of your best defenses against well especially against bears but uh yeah it would, it would do a number it would take out a um a wolf or a cougar pretty quick too so I'm gonna make, I think I'll get two good spearheads out of that. And uh, then I have another, I have another one here. It's a bit thinner. I'll flatten it out later on. And I think I'll get a whole bunch of knives out of it. And it's using, this is why I wanna kind of abandon this one, for example. Because when I harden this, will it harden? I don't know, maybe. But this stuff, I know for a fact that this is uh, a AISI, uh, I think, um, 5160 alloy carbon steel. So it's uh, it's good stuff. It's really good stuff for uh, knives and spearheads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. go that's some awesome stuff it's uh it's almost it's almost three quarters of an inch thick so i don't know we'll see how it turns out i love it two giant spearheads that's what i think i'll make out of it so we got the first piece off Holy crap, that takes a long time to cut through. This is gonna be a fun project. That steel's, that steel is tough. Not for the second one. There we go. 
two pieces. So I'm going to, uh, you can kind of see a bend in it, right? So I'm gonna heat these up in a bonfire, like I said earlier, and uh, bend them down, hit them with a hammer and flatten them out. And then, uh, then they'll be good to, uh, to start shaping, which is, I'm gonna go through, it's gonna be tough. I, I'm gonna go through a few blades, I think. Get, uh, cause I'm gonna have to, let's see, probably start about here with a little bit of a metal shaft to connect the wood to, and then I'm gonna have to, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of steel to cut through. It's gonna be interesting, we'll see how that goes. So I, uh, I cut these two also out of that uh, really long leaf spring, and uh, figured I might as well bend them too while I'm there. And uh, then, because this is really good, uh, quarter, really good quarter inch steel, which will make it absolutely perfect for some heavy duty uh, bushcraft knives, some some big ones, and uh, kind of like this guy, right? So, because this is this is quarter inch, and uh, like I said, I'm just not confident in the uh, pry bar steel that I used to make it. So, I think uh, I think I'll do. It's like a uh, this is my own designs. I call it the bush tanto. Anyway, so once I get these flattened out, I can uh, and create a few of those knives out of it. Should be able to get, uh, I'll get two out of it anyway at least. I don't think I can get two out of one strip. Well, I probably could, I could just weld a little bit back on the back for the handle. Because the handles you don't really need to worry that much about. Anyway, because uh, I'm making these for all my end of the world apocalypse friends, our little group, everyone gets everyone gets a knife. Anyway, let's go have a bonfire. Okay, so here I am at the bonfire. Steel's inside and, and uh, slowly but surely getting hotter. And hopefully hot enough to, um, to hammer down flat. Let's just start. All right, let's pull these out and See if anything good happens. Try this one first. Let's run. This is what called being completely unprepared, not having an anvil or proper tools. Is very cool. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's warm. I think it's wow. Warm. <laughs> <laughs> Get back there. Okay. What do we got here? Holy crap. It went the other way. Watch, I bet I overdid it this time. <laughs> That's probably gonna be good enough. I think that's pretty straight. She was pretty curved, so. I think we're good with that. Leave her there to cool down. Woo! <sighs> All right, so we took them out of the fire and uh, uh, slammed them with a hammer, went full caveman on them. And uh, this is a lesson to have proper tools. And I gotta get myself an anvil if I'm gonna keep doing this stuff. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it worked. And uh, uh, I got them pretty darn flat. And the ends on the thinner ones are not super flat, but they don't need to be because those ends are getting cut off anyway. And uh, the big uh, thing I'm happy about is uh, these two big ones here, these really thick ones. Uh, I actually got those flat, which is, and it didn't take much hammering at all. They bent very, very easy. So they were definitely hot enough. And uh, so those will make some good spear spearheads, I guess. And these, I'm gonna make two more of my uh, Tanto style knives out of those. All right, so to not ever have to go through that again, uh, I've 
made myself a little brick forge and uh, it's uh, well it's not a forge it's more of just a little heating oven using fire brick and that way I can heat the metal using just blow torches or whatever and uh, also heat treat the steel when I'm done uh, you know when I've done my final products so anyways in the meantime these worked out pretty good actually so they're not I don't know if they're flawlessly flat but they're lying flat on the table they're pretty good so today I'm going to get rid of these and uh, gonna draw basically my my design on these for the spearheads and uh, well I don't know I think I'll do one for starters see how it turns out Learn a few lessons, make improvements on the second one, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna draw it on and and then then get to cutting, I suppose. All right, so I got my basic design here. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if we get some good, there we go. I think you can kind of make it on the camera that way. Gotta get the light just perfect to uh, illuminate the, uh, the the graphite from the, uh, from the pencil. That's my design. I think it'll be cool. This portion down here will be uh, ground much thinner, and then that's what I am thinking of inserting in the uh, top, uh, top of the pole shaft, big stick, whatever. All right, so now let's, uh, I guess, cut it out and uh, get it, get it clamped down, and get the angle grinder on it. <laughs> fresh blade uh, 10 minutes ago that's a fresh blade this is what happened to it just from cutting that those two sections off it's pretty heavy-duty steel so you're gonna go through a few blades doing this if you try to make one of these I think So, after all the cutting and everything, that's what I'm left with. Um, it's not, it's not perfect. I'm gonna have to do a lot of uh, fine tuning of the shape before I start grinding it down too. And uh, cause I'm gonna basically draw a line down the center and then grind it down on both sides until, until it comes to a point at the edges. It's gonna be a hell of a lot of grinding. And uh, even this part needs to be thinned quite a bit, probably to uh, uh, close close to half of what it is, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I think, it, but I mean, it's pretty huge. Looks smaller on camera for some reason, I don't know why. She's a bit heavy. Okay, so I touched it up a little bit. Uh, had to reshape it a little bit and, and I uh, cut the handle portion off it's not really I guess it's called I guess it's a tang not a handle it's, um anyway so it's looking pretty decent I think and uh, next step is to clamp it to the edge of the desk here I think and uh, I got to grind uh, maybe not all the way back but I do have to grind a a taper so that it gets thicker to thinner as it comes down to the point and uh, once I do that then I can basically just draw a line down there and grind the sides down to a taper going th that way and uh, get it pointy on all sides so guys uh, I uh, Ground it down. I didn't just I finished this bevel like I 
was telling you about. And uh, but then I also did this one at the back towards the uh, tank. And uh, so this is what I got now. It's starting to feel a little bit more like an actual spearhead. Now, um, not only do I have to draw a line down there and a line down the center and then grind there and grind there and I'm gonna just keep grinding and until it's tapered right down to a uh, nice sharp well blade on either side basically right anyway let's see how long this thing is I, I don't know if I've shown you guys how big it actually is in case my gloved hands make it look smaller than it is that's uh almost 17 inches from a uh, point to at the back of the tang and so the blade is about yeah come on it's about 11 inches so um i guess it's time to grind down the edges and uh once the edges are ground down i suppose it's pretty much done i can maybe engrave it with something and then uh mount it on a big maybe uh, i'm thinking a six foot uh pole of sorts so seven foot spear in, in, in total. Should be pretty effective at that length, I think. Just a little tip for uh, if you're trying to grind away a lot of metal. Um, I always use a, a really big, like this is a seven inch uh, grinding disc. And uh, so what you want to do is, but you want to use it right on its edge. So don't use the smaller, I don't know, five, five and a half, anywhere from four and a half to five inch. They're too small. So this, the fact that this is spinning the same speed, but is wider means there's going to be a lot more grinding being done in the same revolution right and uh so use it right on its edge for the init like this for the initial grinding and it really digs in and removes a lot of material rather than flat like this right you can use this every now and then just to kind of smooth it back out as you work your way down and then once you start to get to you know a uh, point where you need something that doesn't grind quite so aggressively then you can uh you can move down to a smaller, finer disc, and uh, maybe even a flap disc after that. So I got the uh, main material removal done now using uh, that giant blade and uh, as you can see I've tapered it to maybe I think it's about an eighth inch thick at the most yeah it's about an eighth inch on the thick at the edges and uh, so I think I got a pretty good profile going here so that's what we have so far it's not absolutely flawless, but it doesn't need to be at this point anyway. So, next step is uh, we're going to take the smaller disc and put it on there. And uh, it's not as rough, and it's smaller, and uh, it's just much safer for grinding right up to the center line and to the uh, the edge of the blade line, I guess, too. And, uh, and then we can polish it up using this guy which it still removes material but it removes even less material and uh, then uh, I guess I'll do a, uh, a sanding with a wood, uh, with a, a wood block or something as the uh, final final step and uh, then I'm gonna mount it to a gigantic stick and go stab bears but but not really Uh, that was good enough for this, and I decided to use this guy right here, my, you know, tabletop sander, belt sander, thingamajig. 
And uh, so it's amazing the, the job this does because this is completely flat on top and it really allows you to get a, a good edge on the, uh, on the edges of your spearhead or your knife or you know whatever you're making. And uh, so as a very, very non-professional, it uh, you know allowed me to, it's allowed me to get you know these edges on it. And uh, so this is what we, we have so far. Get a bit, bit more in the dark here so we can see it better and uh, it, it's definitely not done yet obviously in terms of grinding it down and refining it but uh, we're getting really really close I think there's the, the front view I think it's pretty symmetrical overall not too shabby I suppose for what it is so I'm gonna sand it a bunch more on the belt sander here and I think that will take it to its its final form probably All right, so I'm done my engraving, and uh, it's not the best engraving in the world. It's, uh, it's pretty rough, but I, I honestly don't think I'm capable of doing much better. It's extremely hard to control that uh, Dremel tool, and uh, I'm sure I'll get better time if I did it all the time, but this is the first time I've ever done this. So um, I'm happy, happy with it <laughs> as it is. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use gun bluing, and uh, so, I'm gonna, so basically, uh, I guess what happens is, like I'm using a Birchwood Casey um, Super Blue here, and uh, uh, there's selenium and some other chemicals in it, and uh, what, I, I guess it reacts with the steel and creates black oxide or something, and, and uh, so I'll use a toothpick to get that all inside the letters and then just sand off around the, uh, around the top again uh, to clean up the metal around them and uh, so what we do is we uh, just gonna pour a little bit in a cap here and you don't need very much you need very very little actually probably need like one tenth of what I just put in this little bottle cap so I get that nice and now this this uh, steals the AISI 5160 that is used in a, a leaf springs law for trucks so there is a bit of chromium in it which isn't good for in terms of the steel reacting with this stuff, but I think it's low enough that it, it should work. It should be okay, because it won't work on stainless, but this is has nowhere near, near enough chromium to be stainless. Yeah, that, that seems to be going black right away. Now we're gonna try to sand that off. All right, so uh, I think it's done. I've uh, I've sanded it down as much as I feel like, and I think it looks good enough. And I mean, really, it just needs to be functional, right? And. Uh, I think I got straight, pretty straight on the edges there and everything and the engraving is done. There's a closer look at, look at it for you and uh, not the most super pretty engraving ever but whatever. 
and uh, these these edges aren't razor sharp because uh, you don't really need to be it's that tip that is you know is deadly you gotta be careful about and uh, it already poked me once and it didn't take much to draw some blood <laughs> so uh, yeah now we're going to uh, mount it on a uh, on a big stick or something okay so uh, I have a big stick it's nice and long it's about eight feet long which I think is more than long enough for uh, defending yourself against wild animals while you're you know charging around in the wilderness after bugging out or something it's kind of the purpose of this and uh, so I guess now I'm going to uh, it's hardwood too by the way so it's nice and strong and uh, I guess I'm going to cut a notch in the end to fit the spear uh, spearhead tang in and uh, then I'm going to wood burn it and cover it in oil and uh, to preserve it. So the idea is here that, uh, you know, if I'm in some sort of bug out, apocalyptic situation, um, I don't want to be relying on screws and screwdrivers. I, I could bring a screwdriver or a little multi-tool screwdriver and a few screws with me. I can see that being useful, but I don't want to have to rely on them. So I don't want to attach the spearhead uh, in any way that requires bolts or screws. So what I've done is uh, put these little grooves in the steel and assuming i had to make a new get a new pole let's say i broke this one and mount this on a, a new stick or pole that i carve um i would just use a knife to kind of whittle away the the grooves on the pole wherever you know the groove on the uh on the spearhead is and uh so when i put the lashing on uh, one or probably two strands of lashing will fit down in those grooves and, and it'll just be really really tight and, uh, and then, of course, a full layer of lashing uh, covering the entire surface of the, the tang in, the, in this section of the wood. And I think it'll be good enough to keep it on. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So now I'm going to uh, wood burn it and then uh, cover it in oil, I guess. <laughs> So I'm done burning the whole thing. And uh, I have the uh, the end all ready to go here. I have my notches that correspond with notches on the uh, the blade tang. And uh, so I guess all that's left to do now is to put some mineral oil on it to seal it up better and uh, then put the uh, actual spearhead in it. What I got here is some uh, codernal mineral oil. And uh, I'm just using a napkin because why not so you're doing nothing so uh there it is all finished nice and black and uh it's about, I think, eight feet with, with the uh, spearhead on it. I think it comes to about eight and a half feet long in total, which uh, is pretty long. It's a really good reach on it. So I, uh, I really like how that turned out. And uh, it feels really good. It feels nice and smooth. Hi. Hey! <laughs> and uh, that's my son's friend that just randomly drove by. Anyway. Um, yeah, you can get a good look at it in the light there. It, uh, it feels as nice as it looks. It's, uh, the, and I really think the, uh, the char and the mineral oil will do a great job of preserving it. So, 
what I have here now is uh, this is some uh, what is it? Outwood rope, uh, Outwood utility ropes, one sixteenth inch, uh, one hundred ten pound tensile strength. It's a uh, all purpose, low stretch, and low stretch is the key here. So I think it's made of uh, polypropylene, and which uh, so. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. I didn't want to use uh, uh, nylon because I heard nylon stresses a lot. So uh, we'll uh, use that to wrap the head on it and uh, see how that goes. So I pretty much botched this. I don't know if I'll maybe take it off and try again. And I know there's a way to do it properly by running the strings through somehow with some simple knots. And uh, maybe I should look into how to do those. And uh, either way, it's not going to be perfect because there's grooves along the tang and, and it creates these little uh, pits or whatever in the, in the string as it goes down in certain areas. And, so I'm not going to get it to look perfect, but I could probably get it to look a lot better than this. Um, either way, it's a, it's working. It's on there nice and solid. So I guess there's that. So I'm done and I'm ready to go bear hunting or squirrel hunting. So just to give you guys an idea of, uh, of height, it's, uh, it's pretty tall. So it's about, I think it's eight and a half feet, something like that. This is the butt end of it. I, I'm not sure if I already showed you guys that or not. And the whole purpose of that is if you're buggy on the apocalypse and you have to face down a bear and you want him to impale himself on the spear, then you can just kind of butt this into the ground and uh, that way it can't slip. So here's this here. I'm going to see if it works now though. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's not going anywhere. That's, that actually works pretty well. And now it's all dirty. So, I think my only uh, thing to left to do now is, is to stab a tree with it or throw it at something. It's really heavy actually, but that doesn't mean I couldn't throw it if I wanted to. Hopefully I don't break it, because I just, I just finished it and I think it's really pretty. Tree stabbing test. If I break it, I break it. It's worth, it's worth trying. And uh, I really hope I don't break it though. I really hope I don't miss because that would be embarrassing as hell. Yeah. Attempt number two. Yeah! Hey, okay. did it go deep? It did not go deep at all. <laughs> but it's stuck in it. Look at these vines. The crap. <laughs> yeah, good job. Yeah. Working out slowly. <laughs> okay, so uh, did the tree test, and if you guys can see there, there's a little bit of bend there, a little bit of a bend after I hit the tree, and because uh, I, I didn't, um, I didn't harden this, I didn't heat treat it to harden it up afterwards, and uh, so thankfully, that's an easy fix. I'm just gonna heat that up with a torch, and then uh, just tap it back. Nice, nice and gently tap it back and it should be relatively straight again. And uh, so the question is, should I take this head off and heat treat it? Which is really not hard to do, apparently, with the uh, AISI 5160 steel that this is using. Um, and, but I don't, I don't think I will because my reasoning for that is that I, uh, I'm not using this to fight trees or, or rocks or anything that's hard enough to bend it. In fact, um, you know, the whole idea is it's a, you know, wild animal defense spear kind of thing. And uh, so I, I kind of want it to bend if I ever, if it ever hits anything that's harder and uh, I kind of want it to bend rather than break because it is quite a, a slim spearhead. It's made to, you know, slice into a big bear or Sasquatch or something and go nice and deep, right? and do a lot of damage and uh so i kind of want it to bend i guess 
And because my, my fear is that if I had, for example, if I had hardened this first and then thrown it at a tree, I wouldn't be surprised if that tip had broken right off. Even, off, even if I tempered it afterwards for, you know, 400 Fahrenheit, two hours in the oven or whatever's needed to, for a proper temper. So I don't think I'll harden it. I think I'll leave it in its current form. And because uh, if it does ever bend on anything, it's just going to be that tip. And uh, I'll just heat it up, bend it back. And worst case scenario, I can always grind it down and just, you know, get another tip on it by grinding it down. But uh, this should be an easy fix. Torch and a little hammer. Here, I'll give you another view of the spear here. <laughs> Holy crap, it's long. There you go. There's the end of it. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. And uh, if you like what I did here today and you wanna see more ridiculous projects in the future, knives, axes, you know, and other bushcrafting survival stuff that I'm gonna be doing, uh, including, you know, uh, showcasing my my idea for, my ideas for bug out bags and, you know, everything. Everything related to survival, bushcraft, uh, amateur crappy blacksmithing and uh what was the other thing oh yeah prepping because you know that's that's literally the name of the channel so um we'll be we'll be attempting all of that and uh the idea here is we're going to get a rural property here really soon and sell our place here and create a whole homestead and everything and uh that should be a lot of fun and i'll have a spear to defend against bears who try to invade our homestead so that's good too anyways if you like this video and you're wanting to see more, then make sure you subscribe, please, and, uh, and tell your other uh, crazy paranoid friends like me. Anyways, thanks everyone, take care, catch you later.